out of the frying pan and into the fire. That's just the way I like it. Coming up, I see if I can take the heat as a firefighter. Get that water open up. Hold it, hold it, hold it. It's trial by fire at the Academy as I see if I have what it takes to ride with America's bravest. <laughs> oh, he'd ride with me any day of the week. Exploring what makes our hearts beat faster on adrenaline. If you were like me, when you were a kid, you wanted to be a firefighter. But did you ever think of 1,200 degree temperatures? It's so hot, your face is burning through the mask. So dark and smoky, you can't see your hand in front of you. Does that get your blood pumping? Well, good, because that's what we're going to explore today. I'm here in Wayne, New Jersey, at the Passaic County Fire Academy, where thousands of men and women come to be trained, tested, and hope to walk out as firefighters. Each person must endure a minimum of 140 hours of training while passing a series of physical and academic tests along the way. And while most recruits have three or four months to prove themselves, I've got one day. Dave Everson and Jack Decker are some of the original instructors here at the Fire Academy. Hey, I'm John. John, Dave Everson, how you doing? Nice to meet you. Uh, I'm Jack Decker, how are you? Nice to meet you, Jack. So, uh, you guys are going to teach me how to be a firefighter. We're going to try. We're going to give you a real crash course. Dave explained to me that it takes months to make a fireman, but today I'm going to get a taste of what it's like. Well, we're going to give you a crash course in uh, search and rescue. An advancement of a line, how to put out a fire, and then at the end we're going to give you a little bit of a surprise. I'm going to take you inside and show you some equipment that you're going to be wearing and how to use it. All right, I think I'm ready. You ready? Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. The first thing I had to do is get familiar with the equipment that would keep me safe while training. Even in a simulated environment, I still would be facing temperatures up to 1200 degrees. As I suited up and added 85 pounds to my body for the rest of the day, it reminded me of the weight of the combat gear we would wear in the Army, and the same is true for this gear. Oh yeah. Now, it should feel a nice tight seat. It's hot, bulky, and awkward, but it will save your life. Now, is this always a two-man job? No, you do this by yourself, and it's usually very quickly. OK, now we're almost ready to go in. Almost. How do you feel? I feel a little bit more ready for 1,200 degrees. Geared up and ready to go, we headed to the burn building where I'd be getting a crash course in my first task. The burn building is a $1.2 million fire simulator. The fire is created by gas that is controlled by an operator. Everything from smoke to temperature to volume of fire can be controlled by one station. This makes for a realistic training environment that is as close to a real structural fire as possible. I took a last deep breath of clean air as the smoke started to billow out of the building and the fire truck hooked up to the hydrant. Dave was just about ready to give me a crash course in my first task. All right, now I've got all my gear on. So Dave, what's my first task? All right, what we're going to do is we're going to get you into advancing a line into a building. We're going to have Dave over here give you a hand. He's going to be your partner. Hey, Dave, Dave's going to John. work with you. How's it going? First thing we have to do is get the line off the engine. Seems simple That's enough. first. Well, it's a little more difficult than you think it is. Nothing was as easy as I thought it would be. But Dave started with the basics, taking the hose off the truck and getting familiar with the components. One of the things you want to do when, a, when you're using a line is keep it out in front of you. Okay. So push it out as far as you can. Water's going to come through. A little turn. Put them for water. Dave showed me the fundamentals of operating a hose line. He taught me how to maneuver it with my partner and operate the nozzle. And while this may look simple, with the amount of water flowing and the pressure kicking back at me, I knew that advancing this through a building would be no easy task. All right, this is my first time ever operating a hose with how many gallons per second? Well, right now you're running about 200 gallons a minute. 200 gallons And you're only minute. running at 100 pounds PSI, which at this nozzle right now is about 90 pounds. Yeah. Actual structural firefighting, you'd be running anywhere from 100 to 120 pounds, 110 pounds actually, at the nozzle. 
Yeah. You can safely say it's the largest water gun I've ever handled, and I couldn't do it alone. Thanks to Dave over here. He's doing all the work. He aims this thing. I just got to hold it. Now that I knew somewhat how to operate the hose line, it was time to turn up the heat. Next, Dave was going to take me into a burning building and teach me how to properly advance a line. But going into a 1200 degree room is not to be taken lightly. All right, well, I've been familiarized with the gear, got a sense for what it can do. And I've also got a sense for the conditions that you can go into. See the smoke coming out here? Well, they say where there's smoke, there's fire. And I am about to go into a burning building. I like adrenaline. For a long period of my life, that's what I did. I uh, parachuted, I repelled down helicopters, but there's always that moment when you know you gotta tighten up your game and the way you get there is by that surge of nervousness. Uh, some may call it fear, I wouldn't call it that. It's kind of a necessary part of the game. But uh, right now, yeah. You gotta be a little worried. Be stupid if you weren't a little bit worried. Okay, time for a deep breath. I've got the equipment, but I am going into a 1200 degree room. What do you say before you do that? Hoo-ah. This is it. I geared up so I wouldn't get cooked and followed Dave into my own impending doom. Or so I thought. We checked the door for heat, and if my first grade teacher taught me right, the next thing I was supposed to do is stop, drop, and roll. I saw the orange glow as soon as I opened the door and headed in. I opened the bail and held on for dear life as the hose kicked like a mule. I felt the heat through my mask and fought the hose pressure like I was wrestling a python. Dave was screaming like a drill instructor, but finally the room went dark with smoke. The fire was out. What'd you think? Woo! The rush, huh? You weren't even moving. You hey. gotta keep that line moving. And you gotta move it fairly quick. The whole object is is to cool the air off on the top and let it work its way down. Yeah. Okay? Exactly. I was like, man, could I have? I was like, can I put this thing out? If with a little more training, you might be able to. Yeah. It's not as easy as it looks. No, it is not as easy as it looks. All right. It's a little bit of work. You wanna take about a 10 minute breather and then we'll go back in on the other side. All right. Okay, just lay the line right here. Coming up next, I see if I can advance a line on my own. Get that water off and off. Then, the victim either lives or dies as I test my skills at search and rescue. <laughs> 